Morning, everybody. Welcome to Wagoneer Reviews with a Lumberjack. This is you're gonna punch me in the face. No, I'm not. This is <laughs> no. This is this is awesome. This is uh, Mike Musto. For anyone who doesn't know, most of you probably do. Uh, host of House of Muscle, Big Muscle. We did Hormos, shot that. Big Muscle, which which we we produced together and yeah. shot for for two seasons on yep. Drive. Um, and this is your. 1990 Jeep. Wagoneer, yep, Jeep, Jeep Wagoneer. Right, Grand Wagoneer. Grand Wagoneer. The reason I pause is because they started making this in 62? 63. So it came out as a 63 in yeah. 62. Right. And they basically didn't change it. Till it ended production in 1991. Same platform for 29 years. It's like... Hey, it's insane. It's When you think about what they did, it's pretty insane. It's like buying a, buying a typewriter in 1990. Yeah. You know, it's called like Macintosh, but they're just like, no, it's just still a no, typewriter. No. Same windows, same vent windows, same just about everything. The interior has been updated, but otherwise it's pretty much the same truck as it was when it was released in 63. Can you imagine, can you imagine buying a motorcycle helmet that's the same design as no. like 62? And they're like, yeah, no, we just didn't change it. And you're like, sounds good. I'll put myself in it yeah. and get on the highway. Don't <laughs> like, crash. That's what we're going to do. not crash this car. Um, tell me, because I don't know very much about this vehicle. Yeah. To be fair, we didn't know if this was going to work out. We're in four-wheel drive, by the way. No, you're fine. No, we're not. Okay, yeah. we just says we're in four-wheel drive. Yeah, no, you're fine. Okay. Um, tell people about this vehicle. Right, so this is, believe it or not, this actually belongs to my wife, Aisha. Um, she's always wanted a Wagoneer, and so, what, three years ago, I started, I found one in Florida. Um, actually, Vinny Russo is a buddy of ours, you know Vinny? Yep. Um, I was looking for one. We found this in Florida. I had it shipped to my buddy, uh, Anthony, who owns a place called Henning Auto Collision in Belmore, New York, and he restored the entire Jeep. He restored it. There was a little bit of rust here and there. He cut it out, resprayed it, took it down to the bare metal. New the wood color is awesome. Yeah, and this is the original color. color. Okay, original it's great, color. and the wood looks yeah. really good on the outside. Yeah. Um, so, had it repainted, new vinyl siding, because it is vinyl siding. It's, you know, it's just the vinyl wood grain. Um, and then the interior was actually in pretty decent shape. I don't think anybody ever sat in the back seat. That's original. That, it looks original. Yeah. That's cool. um, wow, it's got, the back seat is almost a mirror. We'll cut to the shot of it, but it's like, there's like a headrest on the bottom. Yeah. Which is actually you can very basically good for just thigh flip support. It. Well, here's the thing. You can flip it and look backwards. You can. Which is pretty, that make, pretty that incredible. That makes way more sense. That is very strange. Yeah. That was a, the trend that kind of went away, right? The back, like my parents yeah. had a, the Volvo with the backward facing Correct. seat. Correct. And you just sit back there as a kid and wave at people. Yeah. You could basically do that in this. And then this seat also folds up and it's got like these two little gun straps on the back that you can hold the seat up to the front so you gotcha. can get the full storage in the back. So you got a full storage yeah. on it. Which is funny because you can't open the back trunk without rolling down the window first and opening it from the inside. That's correct. Which is kind of like, that's a little design yeah, flaw. Yeah, and it is. And, it, and the problem is like, they, they changed things over the years, right? So the original models actually had a crank where you could move it up and down, which I personally like um, because this one's electric and you've got a switch on the on the bottom of the dash that'll roll the window down and then you can also do it by the key. The problem is it is electric. If it right. goes, it's a bitch. Yeah, right? how, do you get, how do you get the back open? Yeah. How like, do you get that window out? Right, so if like this went for some reason, and again, it's 30 plus years old, I would convert it to a crank and then be done with it. But uh, no, it works, it's just... I mean, it's in really, like, dude, everything's in really good shape. Everything looks really clean. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's, like, very there's small. There's pits here pit. and there. But really, really minimal. I mean, I, when I first opened the door, I was like, oh, this is, almost looks brand new. It, but what's hilarious about it is because they did all the tooling yeah. 40 years ago, and they just kept it the same because they are right. making so much money. Right. They, they were so popular, they didn't stop making it. But you have window switches here, which are the same, <laughs> basically, as my grandfather had on, like, a 73 Cadillac. Yeah. Uh, all yeah, it, it's pretty funny, and um, Every, everything was just updated over the years. We, oh, there we go. Yeah, We've got our nice <laughs> on the drive column. two L. That's what you got. Yep, on the well, column. It's a three speed. So it's a three speed automatic, right? Okay. So this is you got to remember that this is a Mopar, right? So at day's end, you're clear. We're very I, clear, but yeah. this car is very slow. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, see, this is so. They had a bunch of different motors over the years. This has the AMC 5.9 liter 360 in it, mm -hmm. so it is not powerful. Nope. Okay. It sure isn't. It's, I'm pushing the gas more. Yeah. And it's it's really just for no, no, show. No, it, the, yeah. the gas pedal is like a simulator. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, no, you push the gas. No, it's not. It, it came stock with 144 horsepower and 280 pound feet of torque. Come on! Yeah. Oh, I forgot. Well, the engine 
When was this engine developed? Because in the 60s, oh, and the 60s I mean, they had more power than that. In the 70s. All right, and then it, they got all the smog stuff on there, and then which choked it even more. And yeah. even more. Now you can free it up, right? You pull the smog shit out, and everything else. Then it's a typical Mopar steering box. Well, um, but was this because it was made by AMC for a while, right? Yes. And then Chrysler, Chrysler bought it bought in like it. the 80s. Correct. They probably didn't change anything. So they kept using the same like presses and everything, or did they change the steering box it, and that got worse? No, the better. steering box is pretty pretty stock to original. Um, okay. They really didn't change them that much. They 80 the big changes, the last three years are considered like the best year. So 89 through 91. Okay. Um, and that's when they got like 89 through 91 has the rear window wiper. Um, it's got a different air conditioning compressor, a sealed compressor, right? It, and a couple of little things here and there. Um, well, I'm just, I'm laughing because in the 60s, it was like, an, it was an industrial oh, truck, right? That's it. it. It's a tractor with a, with a great looking body. That's all it was. It's just a really good looking truck. And then we jump 30 years and you're like, that's the good one. Yeah. Because that one got, and it's like, there's almost a pause because they didn't change very much. Like, that one got the new keychain. Yeah, that's right. And that one got the <laughs> well, rubber the pedals instead of is, plastic. You can take a grill. I'm pretty sure about this. You can take a grill from a 63, uh -huh. pull this grill out. And put the new grill in, put a 63. All oh, the yeah. parts oh, yeah. basically swap over, aside from like some, some marker lights and stuff like that. It's not, you know, when I was a kid, these were all over the place. This was like if you were a doctor or you were a lawyer, like this is what your wife drove, mm -hmm. you know? Um, right, it was the first, luxury by SUV. all measure, the first luxury SUV. It was before, was it seven years before Range Rover oh, even yeah. existed? Yeah. And I mean, what, you get like a Bronco one? That's not luxurious. No. Blazer. Scouts, Blazer. Blazer like, Scouts. Yeah. There was nothing like it. And uh, I can't remember. Why did they design this thing? Like, I mean, the Willys was the Willys, which is basically like a canoe. This basically came out, and it was just their utilitarian vehicle, right? Because there was need for an SUV. Yeah. Right? For a family SUV. And, and the, when it came out in 63, I mean, it, 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 again, a bunch of different versions, they were very, very basic inside. So when they started upgrading these, like this version pretty much came out, I believe it was the early 80s, I want to say like, yeah, handling is not good, So just so you know. It's not bad though, it doesn't lean that much. I know you did suspension on the whole thing. Uh, I mean, we're not, obviously we're not yeah, cornering yeah. this, we're not going to right. cannon carve this car, you guys are like, how does it handle at the limit? Yeah, it handles like a I mean, there's, there's zero steering feel and there's quite a bit of play. Right. Uh, <laughs> I'm kind of like... I turn the wheel a little bit and I go, oh, I guess I didn't turn off. And then the car starts to turn. Yeah. Like, oh, no, I did. All right, we got to back off a little bit. That guy's, like a suggestion. guy's mowing the forest. Uh, it's a suggestion of steering and it gets to it when it wants yeah. to. Yeah. You know, we're not leaning over. Let's see, it goes straight. Oh, yeah, it's you around go straight, up then you okay. around. Um, Rick, uh, it's got a little dead spot at the top and then it. Yeah. And again, it's a dead spot in the middle. It, it's, I mean, the steering is just straight up vague. The steering is really you know, vague, and the brakes are vague. The brakes are vague, and it's, it's got front discs and rear drums. Okay. Um, but everything else... Wow, is, I'm still in the pedal, I'm still in the brakes, and it's... Yeah, yeah. You, gotta, you just gotta... I think... Uh, I guess go down here. Um, you have to, like, recalibrate your brain. You, know, you can't be like, oh, the, how does this feel compared to a new car? I mean, that's yeah. the measurement for most people, but it's not fair to go... Why doesn't this top stop like a Honda Civic no, no, Si? No. It, the one thing that I, I actually really like about this is that it it slows you down. Yeah, that's true. Right? So if you're used to driving new cars and everything, and then you get in this, you literally have to drive this. You might turn to it all the way. That is a very impressive turning radius. I told you. Alright, you, you you did say that. Right? You you did say that. Uh, Musto said that this has a better turning radius than Jason Camisa's uh, uh yeah, Volkswagen and that may have been a stretch, but that was very impressive. Yeah. Like, I don't think my car would have made that turn. I know the LS400 wouldn't have made that turn. Because that has a terrible turning radius. But yeah, you, you do slow down. You corner very gently. You do. This. You're like, eh, I don't want to I don't want to get into any no. shenanigans I'm not ready for. And I mean, here's the thing. Like, By the way, looking at how you look today, are you like a Peterbilt guy or are you more international? And what and what is like the truth behind a pilot TA store? What happens there at night? Things that you don't want to know about. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Musto's like Italian from New York, hates nature. You've been camping once. You told me you brought a blazer with a mattress in the back and a generator. And the last time we went camping was we filmed King of the Hammers. And we slept in a trailer, slept in a trailer which is like indoor camping with, with a freezing cold. Heater. And now you're dressed like someone who's like, you taking down a steer well, later? I can string that for you. This is what, when you drive this, you kind of need this. 
right? And the cool part is, and it's fun because I've like I've had cars that everybody looks at, I've, but this this is universally liked. Yeah, it and is. So every time we take it out, we go somewhere. Everybody's like, I want to buy that. I want to buy that. And it's it's great to know that they're in demand. Um, this this is a forever car for us. Okay. This is we're never selling this. Wow. All right. We love this car. It's we've always wanted one. Wife has always wanted one, and it's it's just it's a fun car. You know. It's fun. It is one of the best looking trucks oh, it's ever great. made. Yeah. Like it's got, it's got a, a personality to it. It's like the hood. I was trying to think. It's like, I don't know. It reminds me of like Vikings or something. It's got like these shoulders and this hood, and, and the front grille is kind of leaned forward, yeah. uh, which is almost what gives the like minis attitude. It's that leaning forward. I'm gonna go do something, even though this is kind of like, yeah, I'm gonna get to that in a minute. I'm just oh, I'm right. old. And, <laughs> oh, I'm not that fast. Right. I mean, the good part is, well, I mean, they're big, you gotta remember, it's a solid line of axles, front and rear, leaf springs, front and rear. Um, you know, it is three-speed 727, two-speed transfer case, low range. It's like a Billy, it'll pretty much go up and over yeah. anything. Um, well, that's the benefit of trucks, I mean, cars, too, that were made yeah. in the 40s, 50s, 60s. I feel, I feel like my theory is they didn't know how to penny pinch, really. They didn't. Like, they didn't know how to go, oh, let's... Let's weaken this steel by 4% and right. then we'll save 20 cents. Correct. So that's why you can do, you know, reckless burnouts in old muscle cars and the diffs don't break right. unless you add like a thousand horsepower or this or my dad's old Scout 2. Right. Like the axles were gigantic because that's just what was around. Right. You know, why would they Why would they go to the work of pressing out cheaper axles when that tractor store has been making them for a long, long time? Right. And I mean, you could tell us it's, it's Jeep in the 80s and the early 90s, right? So the interior, there are parts here that are cheap. There's no question about it. Um, but the fact is, it's this one, like this particular truck, it's got 169,000 miles on it. Yeah, there's no fuel. Nope, nope. I'm looking for it. I'm hoping there will be. No, no, there won't be. No. It's it'll grab and then flip over. <laughs> <laughs> there's like, there's just so you know, there's not going to be like a. Oh no, it's no. It's just you're either turning or you're under roof. This is like this is like dating a robot in 2040. Yeah, like, Remember, maybe you're going downhill. It'll though. develop a personality. Yeah. No, no, yeah. there's no feel. No, there's no it feel. Just, this Remember is, the brakes are awful. This is very weird. Yeah. I'm like, okay, we're going too straight. So now I, I turn the wheel an inch, yeah. and now we're going too yeah. much to the left. But watch the, I'm telling you, watch the brakes. I'm, I'm just trying not to use them. No, I feel no, like that's you're going to need them. Can't we just run out to the bottom of the hill and then uh, slow down? You're going to need to slow down before this current up here for the simple fact that it won't want to make it otherwise. All right, so we're going to go. That's like half brake, more. Yeah. It's, wow, it's like pressing into a fanoodle. It's like the foam that keeps getting denser yeah. but never ends. Yeah. It's like a Tempur-Pedic mattress. That's I what know. it feels like. <laughs> you, it's, you it's, can jump on the mattress and the brakes won't turn on. You right. won't disturb your partner. All right. But I mean, the cool part is like you can. It, this is. I hate to say it, but it's not really a vehicle for today's roads. Um, it's one of those things where, when you're cruising, you can cruise at seventy. It'll, 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 it'll cruise at 75, 70, 75. It doesn't really want to go faster than that. And truth be told, you don't really want to go faster than that. Yeah, um, I can tell. The other part is, it gets, when it was new, it was rated at 10 miles per gallon around town, 12 on the highway. In reality, it'll get 9, 8 to 10. All right. That, that's that's what it'll get. What does your charger get on the highway? So, something I was telling your wife on the way up here. You basically get muscle car miles per gallon in this. Yeah. And she, brilliant joke, said, yeah, with none of the agility. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't get that, you know, that legendary 69 muscle car agility. Yeah. agility. You don't get that suspension. I, I can't. You, you, dude, you're getting like first gen, second gen, 4 GT on a track miles miles per gallon. Yeah, I mean, it's, but again, it's one of the, listen, we don't, we don't drive this every day. You don't, which... We don't. I mean, we, we've got other cars. But the fact of the matter is, it's it's one of those cars. And you got to remember, we live in Northern California. Mm -hmm. So, like, my wife and I will go to Napa and Sonoma. And um, it is literally the perfect Northern California truck. Because people see it. They love the way it looks. It fits in perfectly up here. And it's just kind of a fun old steel rig, you know? Yeah. It's just, I get it. I know. totally get it. I think, I think this has that, you know, beautiful cars... Are are uh, the friends of all people? Yeah, you know, a car that's really, really good, like Aston Martins. There are people that don't really like cars, right? And they might not like Ferraris, and they, you know, they might think they something about Aston the owners, Martins. but they see a car that's so pretty, you just can't deny it. And I think this has that. Plus, they were so popular, yeah. And everyone, they, if 
you liked it when you were a kid, you like it now. Yeah. Uh, if you saw The Great Outdoors, which is a great yeah. John Candy movie, you are Dan Aykroyd in that right now. You're I like, am. you gotta wear the thing. You know, you, you show up, you're thing. like, I bought this at the truck stop. You know, I got the cowboy no, hat and I bought a truck hat. Swiss knife. You need a plaid, you need a vest. Yeah. Right? The beard is optional. How do I set up this tent? Yeah, but see, that's the whole thing. Yeah, that's, that's the best part about a Grand Wagoneer. Like, if you drove one back in the day, you didn't need to know how to set up the tent because you'd be in a campground where somebody else would set up the tent for you. That's exactly, that's totally and that's, true. I would totally do that now because I don't, totally you know true. me, I don't care. Ooh, this turn is not cool. No. <laughs> that's, no. I feel like we're going 41 miles an hour. No. And that was kind of scary. No, it lets you know exactly what it doesn't want to do. It does. Which is just about everything. Yeah, you can probably um, climb a hill like, I mean, you yeah, know, you put it the, the, the four wheel drive it's switch, by the fly. way. It looks like it'll break off. Yeah, no, it's fine. It looks like a um, a floss pick. Yeah. It's very weird because the exterior is like I don't know this gorgeous design that you yeah, they couldn't do in the '90s because it's yeah it's just I don't know the shape at well, the time they don't design cars like that as they move to the '90s I think got like round and small. Well, and that was the problem. I mean, it had to go out of production in '91. If it needed to go beyond that, they would have had to redesign the whole thing for cafe regulations and safety regulations and so on and so forth. So did they? They ignored that for 30 years. They no, I know. Just... But, yeah, but the regulations for '90 that's when everything changed. Okay, and that's why. Like the ninety ones were final production. They have a little plaque here. It's his final edition, or whatever the case is. Um, but that's ultimately why they needed to get rid of it. This was also the last carbureted vehicle, if I'm not mistaken, because it has a carburetor. This is a fuel injector. Yeah. Sold in the United States since nineteen ninety one. Still has a carburetor. Yeah. So it's weird. Yeah. Weird dinosaur. You know. I am, and I'm fine with that. I like my old shit. It's, it's oh cool. It's my like, God, uh, are we there what? yet? No. <laughs> no go, seriously. Go back to sleep. Listen. Go back I to sleep. I want to go to Nantucket. This Where's your go- sister? Where's Pepper? We ate her. You, we, we you ate lost her. her. This is the waspiest car. What are you doing with this thing? We are going sailing. We're going to go sailing. We're going to go sailing. Uh-huh, we're going to get some great uh-huh. uh-huh. And then some lobster for dinner. Nice. Yes. All right. Like, okay. Just, Club, just go. Hurry up. Do your homework. Go back. Finish. Go okay. back. Thank you. All right. Otherwise, you're gonna have to get into brown or something. <laughs> <laughs> that was fucking disturbing. <laughs> oh my god, Jason Kamis in the back. We're gonna go drive his uh, his Volkswagen cab now. Uh, Mike Musso. Follow him on all the Instagram, all the social things. Um, watch House of Muscle. <laughs> this is a very cool, weird. It is. It's such a weird. It's experience. a dinosaur. It's a dinosaur, but it but it yeah. still feels kind of modern and that's right. Very comfortable. Yeah, we're, we're gonna give you away. We're gonna give you away <laughs> like the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> like the other ones. The people are twisted. Do your homework. All right. Do what he says. Go watch Mike. Bye, everybody. See you later. <laughs>